Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Hughes here. We're going to be taking a look at how to remove halos that occur because of fringing here in this video using Photoshop. Uh, now, this is going to be really beneficial for high dynamic range images where, uh, you know, maybe these fringing areas because of a dark area next to a really light area are exaggerated in the HDR process. And the same kind of thing is happening here in this image, even though it's not a high dynamic range photograph, uh, because I'm starting out with a good flat photo that I've tone mapped within uh, actually Adobe Camera Raw using the blacks and whites and highlights and shadows sliders to make sure I'm retaining all the detail that I want. Uh, because I'm doing that, and then I'm adding a whole bunch of contrast after the fact, uh, I'm going to get an exaggeration of any fringing that's occurring. So I want to get rid of this little white line that's around his shoulder, and this one right here even uh, as well. And so we're going to take a look at how to do that really quickly using uh, three tools and not having to do any sort of labor-intensive real work. Uh, now, just to show you what's happening, Again, I'm starting out with a really flat image. I'm going in and adding different kinds of contrast, dodging and burning. By the time I get to my last color layer, uh, which is sort of darkening down and, and, and giving us this nice, rich, dark set of blacks in different sections of the image. Uh, by the time I get there, though, we have uh, some halo issues. right? It's, you're starting to be able to really notice that. Well, when I convert from color to black and white and I add more contrast, uh, that edge is even more exaggerated. We want to fix that. To do this, I'm going to zoom in to maybe 100%, and we don't really even have to zoom in that far most of the time, but so that we can get a good look and a good feel for what's happening. I'm going to zoom way in. I'm going to be clicked on my last layer of pixels here, because what we're going to need to do is make a selection of, or, sorry, a selection of pixels and then move them by changing a blending mode. Uh, we're going to be able to sort of curtail any sort of labor intensive uh, bit of work. Now, I'm going to click on my last layer there in my layers palette. I'm going to move over into my Tools palette, and I'm going to use my Lasso tool. So I can either hit L on my keyboard or click on the Lasso tool itself. Uh, that's going to give me my Lasso function. I'm going to use my Wacom tablet because it's just going to make it a lot easier to make my selection. And I don't even have to be too awful careful with my selection. I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm pretty liberal with the pixels that I'm, I'm capturing or I'm making a selection with outside of uh, our, our Halo area. Right, and of course, this is the halo, the white. This I would consider the inside. This is the outside. I want to be liberal with the outside. I then, once I've made my selection, hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. Uh, that simply copies and pastes uh, those pixels to a separate layer for us. And then from there, I change my blending mode. Now, it's going to be set to the normal blending mode by default. We go and change the blending mode to darker color because what we're going to do is move these pixels down. And because there are darker pixels up here uh, than in here, it's going to sort of save our butts. <laughs> now, I'm going to hit V on my keyboard, which gives us the move function in our tools palette. And then I'm simply going to use my arrow keys. And I'm going to move my pixels down or inward, and then maybe to the right a little bit. Uh, but basically, I just want to make sure I'm getting rid of uh, any of that halo uh, that is occurring in there. And again, by moving these pixels, we're able to do this. Right? And that's basically gotten rid of the halo for us. Uh, now, we do create a seam in some of these darker pixels as we move them in. I don't want to have that seam in there. This looks unrefined. It looks really janky. It looks like I've made a bad selection, because I did make a bad selection. So what we do to clean this up, is I hit the Layer Mask button in my Tools palette, sorry, in my Layers palette here in Photoshop. And that's simply the little square with a circle in it underneath. You see it generates a white layer mask as soon as I click on that. I then hit B on my keyboard, which gives us a brush tool. And then I just brush using the black as my foreground color, I should mention. Uh, I just brush the fringing out, or rather, not the fringing, the seam that we've created. Now, as I do this, I generally want to stay away from the halo site itself. I kind of want to stay uh, in on the inside and maybe even outside if it's creating a seam. But I, I really want to be careful that I don't you know, use a really soft brush and then brush into the halo area, because that's basically going to hide those pixels. And then it would be pointless that we even did it. But if we take a quick look, again, there's the before. There's the after. It nicely cleans that up. I'm just going to make sure and clean up the, the, that uh, seam that, that's occurring. Uh, now, just to do this one more time, 
And I kind of like the edge here. It kind of separates his shoulder off of the background right here. But let's say this was a fringe and we didn't want it there. You use the same technique. So you go back to your pixel layer. You hit L on your keyboard so you can make your selection. I make a, a, a nice coarse selection. Again, being liberal with the pixels on the outside. Hit Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. V on my keyboard. Don't forget to change your blending mode. In fact, if I do forget to change my blending mode, it'll be pretty noticeable. You see, I'm just moving the pixels around. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go into my, uh, my, my blending modes here in my layers palette, go into darker color, and then I'm going to move my pixels. So I'm going to hit V, as I already did. I'm going to move them to the right, a little bit down in this case. And you really just move the pixels inward and uh, usually down into the right if, if you know, you've got a halo that's curving this way. If we were on the other shoulder, we would go down into the left and so on. It's, it's going to be dependent upon uh, you know, the line and where the halo is. Again, you can see the seam that's showing up. So I need to generate a layer mask. I'm going to B on my keyboard and I'm going to clean up that fringing. That's, or, sorry, it's not fringing. Uh, the seam that's occurring there. And I'm going to clean that up on the outside as well. Uh, sometimes, if we're at 100% opacity for the brush, it doesn't clean the seam up perfectly. So I'm going to hit the first round at 100%, and then I'm usually going to lower the opacity of my brush and then kind of almost feather in. I just, at a lower opacity, keep brushing uh, to get rid of the, the little seam that's occurring. And again, if we take a look at the before and after, we've nicely gotten rid of that halo. Oh, I've got a little bit of the seam right in here. Let's go in with a small brush. We zoom out. Oops, there we go. And we take a quick look at the before and after. Again, it's, it's relatively subtle, but it's going to help to really refine the image, especially with a very simple photograph like this, or anytime you're getting a fringe uh, that's occurring. But hopefully that's been a beneficial demonstration. It's been really fun. Hopefully we can create some more of these demonstrations in the future. Again, my name is Dan Hughes from the Google Plus Photos team uh, and uh, working usually with the Nick tools here, getting rid of uh, some halos uh, that occur basically whenever you add contrast to an image like this. Thanks again.